Thank you very much and thank you for coming to have a little listen to my uh, little talk on immunisation. Um, I'm going to be talking today about immunisation in pregnancy as well as immunisation for your little babies and why it's so important that this um, topic is um, certainly brought to your attention today for sure. So announcing a pregnancy, very, very exciting. People do it in lots of different ways. Sometimes they'll have a box with a pink balloon or a blue balloon and they'll open the box and whatever floats out tells everybody that it's going to be a girl or a boy. Some people find out before they um, uh, deliver their baby to what sex the baby's going to be. Other people wait for the big surprise once it all happens. Um, some pregnancies are much easier than others. Some ladies, lots of morning sickness, don't feel very well at all, whereas other ladies will just absolutely breeze through it. So they're all very, very different. The one thing that does remain very unchanged is the fact that um, when we get pregnant, we change our whole immune system, all right? So we need to be able to change our immune system so we can accept the dad's antigens that are helping create that baby. So if we're going to relax our immune system to um, accept those paternal antibodies, we're actually going to relax our immune system and we'll be much more susceptible to other um, antigens such as viruses, influenza, such as bacterial infections um, like whooping cough. So we can become really sick with these sorts of infections in pregnancy. So it's important that we talk about a couple of vaccines today, one of them being um, influenza vaccine and one being whooping cough vaccine in pregnancy. We know with influenza disease, it can be a very, very serious disease for pregnant women and it can also lead to complications with the unborn baby but also with the babies after delivery. So we really need to protect our mums um, against influenza disease. We know that this is a, a good vaccine. We know that the antibodies that we give the mum from the vaccine will transfer across the baby, um, through to the baby. We can't vaccinate little babies against influenza until they're at least six months old. So that window of opportunity for the baby to get flu disease is left open for that full six month period. So we definitely don't um, want pregnant women getting flu and we certainly don't want little tiny babies um, getting influenza disease either. So you can see there that there's um, quite some significant risks for your little babies with flu, um, particularly in your pregnancy. What we did notice back in 2009 when we had um, the swine flu outbreak, that pregnant women were very susceptible to complications from flu. And unfortunately, a number of pregnant women died from that particular flu. So the vaccine is now funded for all pregnant women um, to help protect them from disease. Whooping cough in pregnancy also can be quite a serious disease, but it's most serious for the newborn babies. Obviously, um, there's some uncomfortable effects for the mums, but it's more significant for the little tiny babies. And I think a few of them have been past the light for Riley stand, and uh, we've got some people that have been vaccinated today, so... Uh, wearing their badge of honour quite well. Okay, so good job. Um, babies uh, that are born to mums that have not had this vaccine are born completely unprotected from whooping cough. So if we can vaccinate the, baby, uh, the mums in that third trimester of pregnancy, get those antibodies to transfer across the placenta to the little baby, they are life-saving antibodies, okay? So your little baby may well get exposed to whooping cough, may well even contract whooping cough, but they won't die from whooping cough like baby Riley did, 
All right, so it's important that we get that antibody transfer um, from mum to baby. So we look at immunisation in pregnancy for these two diseases as a dual protection. So by vaccinating pregnant women, we're not only offering the protection for those pregnant women not to get sick, but also for their babies, either unborn babies or once these little babies um, are actually delivered, they've got that degree of protection. So with your influenza vaccines that are going to be offered, um, like I said, it is a funded vaccine for pregnant women. We would certainly be advocating that anybody that's going to be breathing on your baby should have a flu vaccine as well. So that's the aunties, the uncles, the dads, the grandparents, everybody. We try and um, offer these little babies what we call a cocooning strategy, which just means everybody around that little baby is conferring some protection from disease. So it's like that wall of protection. Um, unfortunately, it's not a funded vaccine for everybody though, just for the pregnant women. But it's well worthwhile having a chat to your immunisation provider about going and having a flu vaccine in order to help protect. It takes about two weeks for you to build your antibodies um, after a vaccine. So we certainly want to um, have this vaccine given to pregnant women um, a good two weeks or more before they deliver. Okay, so we try and get it to them at any trimester of pregnancy. Um, we don't, you know, particularly if women are going to have an early labour and an early delivery, we don't want them waiting towards the, 20, you know, the 38 or 39 weeks to have it. Uh, we'd prefer that they have it a little bit earlier, get those antibodies across the placenta to that little baby before it gets born. With our whooping cough vaccine in pregnancy, um, there is a new campaign now, and this is really largely um, because of the work that baby Riley's parents, Kath and Greg Hughes, have done. This vaccine has been recommended in pregnancy since 2013, but it's only been a funded vaccine for just under 12 months. And Kath and Greg have really advocated for this vaccine, and it really has forced um, the state and territory governments to fund this program. Because it's a state and territory funded program, it is offered differently in each state and territory. So here in South Australia, it is only pregnant women that have access to the free vaccine. Um, we'd highly recommend that anybody breathing on your baby, so the dads, the grandparents, the, the aunts and uncles, should all go ahead and have a booster vaccine against whooping cough to help protect your baby. Um, but they would need to go and see their immunisation provider and pay for that vaccine. Okay. Um, very, very good antibody transfer across the placenta with this vaccine. So if we can get pregnant women vaccinated, it is the best protection that we can possibly give um, to this little baby. So with your childhood program vaccines, the first vaccine that your little baby will be offered um, will be a hepatitis B vaccine. We do test your antibodies um, in pregnancy to see whether you have already got hepatitis B. If you are negative, then that's great, but we don't test you again. So on the delivery table, we actually don't know whether you are still hepatitis B negative or not. So we vaccinate the baby, and the reason that we do that is to stop them contracting any virus that you might have passed on to the baby during the birthing process. Okay. So it's important that you do consider this vaccine. Um, our stand is E29, so if you need a brochure on why we give babies a hepatitis B vaccine, come and see us and we've got a brochure for that. We've also got brochures um, in regards to vaccines in pregnancy and particularly the 28-week pertussis vaccine as well. So come and have a chat with us with that. In regards to the rest of the schedule, um, you can bring your baby in as early as six weeks of age for the first set of vaccines. Um, some of the schedules you might see around will say two months, doesn't really matter. 
but the earlier we can get that baby protected, the better, and that's at six weeks of age. Um, there's quite a busy schedule, but your immunisation providers know this schedule very, very well, and they will be able to guide you through it. There's a number of phone apps now where you can actually have reminders sent to your phone to when your baby is next due. When you're in hospital and after you've delivered, you will get a little blue book that you will have um, to carry around in your nappy bag. And in the blue book will be an immunisation section. So you take that with you to your provider each time and they will record the vaccines in your blue book. They will also record those vaccines onto the Australian Childhood Immunisation Register um, and that will keep track of all of your child's immunisations as well. Okay. Um, if you are getting family assistance payments, then your children do need to be up to date in order to receive those payments. So we've got to make sure that the immunisation register is up to date with all of the information about your children's vaccines. As of last Friday or the 1st of April, um, the childhood schedule did change. So we now have a booster dose of whooping cough vaccine given to babies at 18 months of age, which is absolutely fantastic. What we have been noticing over the last um, number of years is that our antibodies do decline very quickly after whooping cough vaccine. For some reason, these antibodies don't get held in our immune memory for very long. So we were seeing disease in these 18 month old children. If we've got 18 month old children in the house, quite likely we've got a brand new baby in the house as well. So it's now boosting these 18 month children. They'll get another booster against whooping cough when they're four years of age and another booster against whooping cough when they're in year eight high school. Okay, so they get a few doses just to keep our immune memory alive. With pregnant women, at the 28 week um, whooping cough booster. That whooping cough booster is recommended with every pregnancy, regardless of the interval between the pregnancies. So if you're planning family close together where you're having a pregnancy every year, then you will be um, having that whooping cough booster every year offered at each pregnancy. Okay. So, it is easier to keep your baby's vaccines on time. If you do happen to miss some along the way, that's fine. We can catch them up really quite easily. But it is a lot easier to keep them on schedule. So the little phone apps are a really great idea. And certainly your immunisation, many of the immunisation providers will send out a little reminder notice or a reminder SMS um, to your phone if that's your preferred way. Okay. Were there any questions at all from anybody about the vaccines? I didn't realise that they lost their immunity to the whooping cough so quickly. Yes, they can. So the question was, um, we didn't realise that uh, people lost immunity to whooping cough so quickly. Depending on the research that you read, um, so a lot of the research will say that antibodies will wane around the five to 10 year mark. Um, but we do know that particularly with healthcare workers, where we do monitor the amount of disease in healthcare workers, that we've seen disease in healthcare workers that were vaccinated only three years ago. So our antibodies do wane quickly against whooping cough, um, unfortunately. So really important that um, the recommendation is if you haven't had one in the last 10 years, definitely have one, have one with each of your pregnancies. If you have a new baby coming into the house and you think, oh, it's about five years since you know, my partner's booster, it's okay to go in and talk to your GP about having another booster. We can't over-vaccinate, all right? So you can just, yeah. You might get a, because it's got a tetanus component, because it's a diphtheria, tetanus and whooping cough vaccine, because of the tetanus component, which our immune memory does remember well, it might mean that you might get a bit more of a red sore arm 
but that's just telling us that you've got lots of tetanus antibodies that are going to cause that, but that should settle down, all right? So there's no reason that you can't just go and see your GP a little bit earlier um, and get that protection on board, okay? No worries. Any other questions at all? Yes. Okay, so the question was, if they have the vaccine in year eight, um, how long does that last? And if they end up getting pregnant, you know, sort of a little bit later on in their teenage years or early 20s, will they need the vaccine again? We would say yes, if they are pregnant, they would go ahead or visiting a baby. Um, we would still stick with that recommendation at the moment of if it's been, um, you've had a booster inside a 10 year period, it's probably not that necessary, but there's nothing to say that you can't have that conversation with your provider and get one done a little bit earlier. Um, but definitely if people are getting pregnant, they would have a booster at 28 weeks of pregnancy, um, but other people, uh, one inside of 10 years, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Any other questions at all? All good. Okay, well, thank you very much for listening. All right, thank you.